Hi, uh, my name's Rob Wells. I'm a pro assistant professor at journalism at uh, University of Arkansas. And uh, my friend, Dr. Guhan, has, has asked me to come and talk to you about uh, data and how to understand data, how to tell stories in data. So I built this little uh, website for you to uh, as sort of a slide deck and to, to walk through basic issues on understanding uh, data. What we're going to do here is look at you know, how to understand data, flaws with data sets, where to go to get data, storytelling with data, and to talk a little bit about how this uh, used to happen before. So places to go to get data, you get a lot of it from uh, the federal government, from local governments, from businesses, and so forth. The, uh, there's a link here to data.gov. You can click on that. And this is a huge portal of uh, data sets from all different agencies in the federal government, from finance to health, and um, you can uh, pull in, let's see, let's go to uh, something I might know about finance, there you go, and uh, small business lending, uh, you have lending to uh, homeowners and so forth, so a lot of stuff there. You can also go to Baltimore County and get information about Towson. There will be some, uh, this is an open data portal. A lot of uh, local governments have their own open data portals that have building complaints and code complaints and rental registration. And you could download this stuff and make maps from it or do basic data analysis. That's what I'm, I'm going to show you here with the FBI crime database. And one thing we want to do here is the click on this and it brings us to the FBI crime data. And so what this is, this is a 2018 crime in the United States and they have it by violent and property crime and uh, offenses that are closed. They have weapons, homicides, arrest tables, all sorts of things. We can go to the offense tables here and the offense tables bring up all these details and you, table number eight brings us to the different states and so forth. But before we get to all that, let me just talk a bit about how to understand data. One of the things you want to do is to get to the data dictionary and read about the documentation so you understand what are in the various columns and so forth. Little sneak preview of what we're going to pull up here. We're going to pull up a spreadsheet uh, for the state of Maryland. It says offenses known to law enforcement by city in 2018. So that's all the different cities in, in Maryland and the population and the violent crime and the murders and rapes and property crime and so forth. This is pretty straightforward, but you really want to know, like, Violent crime, well, what, what do they mean, 116 violent crimes in Aberdeen? How do they calculate that? What, is, what does that include? And if you got into the data dictionary, you would know that the violent crime is the sum of the murders and the rapes and the robberies and the aggravated assaults. And all that would add up to 116. So you need to know the data dictionary. And the FBI has quite a bit on here talking about the problems and the issues with this data. And they have this, uh, this little uh, tab here called Caution Against Ranking. And it brings up this very sternly worded um, uh, document about, you know, the proper use for these statistics and how you can't compare people and the pitfalls of ranking. Well, we should pay attention to what they have to say. Um, they're making some points that big cities are, you know, socially different than little cities. And if you compare, you know, someplace like Elkton to Baltimore or Crownsville to uh, Silver Spring, it's just, you know, you have kind of a different culture. So you're going to have a different type of type of folks, and um, and different densities of people will lead to uh, different social behavior. So they're making a decent point. 
But as journalists, uh, we will look at the data and make our own judgments and our own assessments of what is the proper use of data. We're not going to let the government tell us what to do. So that is it. There's this uh, data schema here, or data dictionary. I'm going to open that now. And this, I dug around in the footnotes. Basically, that's what you're looking for, is the footnotes for the tables. And it tells us the, all the methods that they use to collect the data. And the interesting thing is that they have different uh, definitions of rape. There was a definition of rape um, up until 2016, uh, beginning 2017, I'm sorry, that um, uh, it was a forcible, it was a, a you know, it had to be some sort of forcible uh, entry. Well, they've revised that, revised that and made it slightly uh, broader to, to encompass other things. So um, anyway, you, you need to look at the fine details of how these things are, are put about. So that's it. Um, we are going to... The other flaws with this data set... So it's 2018. We all know it's 2020 right now. So this, this data lags significantly, but you'll see this constantly when looking at various uh, data sets, that the more detail you get, generally the older the data is, because it takes a while to gather it. So you, um, if you really want to get into the weeds and find out what's happening in small towns, usually it's not unusual uh, you know, for, for this to be uh, a couple years old. So that is not out of the ordinary. Um, one of the other things, if you dug into the footnotes, is there, um, this is voluntary reporting. Uh, all of this uh, information uh, from the FBI that they've compiled, all these police departments voluntarily reported this stuff, and not every community is represented. So it, is, uh, sp it can be spotty, and we might find some flaws in there and some omissions, so we need to know that. But the one thing about the FBI data is it's really about the best you can get, and you cannot beat the price. All right, so we're going to go and retrieve some of this FBI data here. I'm going to click on this table 8, click on that link, and that brings us to table 8, Fences Known to Maryland, how we got here. Let's Let's go back here. You can also get there by going from this page to go to Offense Tables, and then Table 8, and then to Maryland, and brings us back to the same place. I just gave you a break and gave you a good uh, hot link there. So there's the data declaration. Click on that again, and that is all the details that we need um, about the, the data. And then we have a download to Excel, and then a state table listing. Okay, so we're just going to download it to Excel. I'm using a Firefox browser, and it uh, asked me to save it. I've already saved it, so I don't have to go through all that goes to my downloads folder. So this is in a web form here and I'm going to bring it up in my Excel and I've already had that pre-opened here. So we see the city, population, violent crime, and then the components of violent crime, murder and non-negligent manslaughter. So we need to know what non-negligent manslaughter means and why that's grouped together with murder. Rape with the, um, with the footnote number one. See that in there? Footnote number one. So there's obviously, anytime there's a footnote, you want to figure out what's going on there. Robbery, aggravated assault. We notice that violent crime is bold. Well, that's because it's the sum of these... Uh, other categories. Property crime is bold and it's the sum of these categories. I happen to know that because I said I wonder if property crime 
would add up, so I'm going to do an Excel formula here, sum of these. I've just added those four rows together, and yes, see? By adding burglary and larceny and theft and motor vehicle and arson gets to 314. That's the same number as property crime. Okay. Back to the thing here. Okay. So we retrieve the data. We're looking at it. One of the things you want to do with data is... Let's shrink this back. You see how this down in the corner I'm expanding and shrinking this using this... Uh, expander column that's a nice little feature of Excel. You can do this in Google Sheets too. Google Sheets is perfectly good. I just happen to like Excel. So in dealing with a data set we have our these is our these are our headers and these are the um, the, the detail in the different uh, fields. The headers uh, um, describe the uh, the variable. So we're going to start in the first row, first uh, item. I'm clicking on A6 and on my Mac keyboard I'm doing a shift and a command and a right arrow that highlights the entire uh, uh, top row and down here it, it tells me that I have 12 columns of data. See how it says, whoops, bring that back up here. It says 12, count 12, so that's 12 columns of data. Okay, so this is known as a four corners test, trying to get a sense of the size and scope of the data set. Also, it brings us down to row 82. I did um, a down shift command downshift to, to highlight that whole uh, item. I'll go back, uh, shift command up, brings us back up, and then I'm going to go shift command down arrow. Just, oops, shift command. I'm going to go command down arrow. Oops, there we go. And command up arrow. Yeah, okay. Shift command up arrow. Just highlighting the city. It tells us it's 77 rows. Each row is a different city. So we have 77 cities represented in this data set. Next up. We walk through that, okay. We talked about the, de the rape definition. And I want you to take a minute here and identify the place that has the largest number of violent crimes. Um, this isn't an Excel class, but I hope you know how to sort in Excel. Sort on the violent crime, a descending order, you'll be able to figure it out. So you can figure out the city that has the largest number of violent crimes. What are some of the problems with writing a news story just based on that single number? And I will wait for a couple seconds here before finishing this off. Okay, so you had your class discussion about the place with the largest number of violent crimes, but the really, th the big question is like, what are some of the problems with writing a news story based on that single number? Well, you know, it's pretty obvious the place that has the most violent crimes is Baltimore, but if you put that out there, Baltimore also has the biggest population. So what do we want to do to try to adjust to that? And that brings us to our math alert. This is not very hard. We're going to construct a ratio, and the ratio is going to divide one number into another, and we're going to divide, uh, you know, the violent crimes into population, and get a ratio of violent crimes per capita, per person. This is how we do it in Excel. And this, I'm going to type in my column per capita violent crime. And then I'm going to start a formula, equal sign, open parenthesis, violent crime. I'm going to click on that cell, and it says C6, right? And I'm going to divide that, hit the slash, into population, and close parenthesis and return. 
it says zero. You know why it says that? Because it is a very small number. And so go up here and give it a little bit more detail. There we go. Bring it out. And it's 0 0.007. So it's uh, uh, less than 1%. Less than yeah, 0 0.007 crimes per person. How are you going to say that in the newscast? I mean, it's ridiculous. So we're going to say just multiply it by an arbitrary factor of a thousand people. So for every thousand people, we get seven violent crimes. That's an arbitrary multiplier. We are just doing it so people can understand the ratio. It's perfectly fine math to do this so long as we are consistent. I'm going to take that, and you see how that little cross just turned black? I'm going to drag it all the way down. I'm copying this formula all the way through the spreadsheet. And now I know what is the, uh, with some exceptions, violent crime per capita in Maryland. Let me bring this back here. And we see, you know, um, Baltimore's got some problems. Love Baltimore, love this city. Had a lot of fun there when I lived in Maryland, but it's a violent place. 18 violent crimes per 1,000 people, the biggest in the state. So the news question I have for you is look at these violent crime rates and then look at places that have, and then figure out what the average of this column is. Use, that, use Excel to figure out the average. Find out which places have above average violent crime. And then find out the population. Find out the average population in Maryland. And find out the places that have below average population. Above average crime, below average population. Violent small towns. It's pretty interesting. Just take a look here. Elkton, not too far from Towson. 16,000 people. Tough place, 13 violent crimes per thousand people. What's going on in Elkton? That's the sort of storytelling that I would recommend and the sort of uh, basic data analysis. So that's uh, a run through on how to do and understand data, some of the basic questions you want to use. I hope this is helpful and uh, best of luck. I wish I could be with you, but we're sort of in an unusual period in our country right now. So. Thanks. I uh, appreciate your attention.